that's what we do. We try to keep on the cutting edge of what is needed in the labs to learn about this disease. So right now, we do uh, assess cognition, your thinking. We do uh, blood samples. We send some to Marcy and Jim to uh, grow cell lines. We also send blood samples to uh, a biomarker repository so we can look for other biomarkers in the blood. And our biomarker team has really been active this year and have had several hits that I hope we have a chance to send with you, to share with you another time. And those would be indicators in the blood that might show how your disease is progressing. So we have a lot of information we need to look at. We also decided to add a urine sample this year uh, where we'll also get a urine sample to see if that can have utility for the scientists in the labs. We also um, gather uh, a brain scan, which right now many universities are uh, examining different components of the brain scan. And I can't even read that one. Is that the motor? So, and then we also do a videotape of motor skills. We try to do that as detailed as possible. And one thing we're adding this year is really a quantified motor assessment where we literally don't just measure you sticking out your tongue, but we have you put it on a force pad so that the computer can detect if your tongue shakes. I, I know, those scientists, they'll stop at nothing. <laughs> so, but that has only been added at five sites, so if you're one of the lucky few, you will be asked to put your tongue on the progressor and see if it, it, it moves a little bit, because evidently that's more sensitive than having the doc just look at your tongue. So, but we will try anything to try to get the best measures so that we can try more ways to treat Huntington's disease. So we send the data. Oh, and the, the other two, the, we have two more things that are really expanding this year. One is trying to better understand the psychiatric ratings, the behavior ratings. This is something you told me about early on, that it was something that you would really struggle with and could get treatment on, but knew it was an indication of early disease, and that is sometimes mood changes, or what some people told me were personality changes, but I think it's gating problems, which, which I, if those of you have, have heard me talk about it before, it means that we have less control over the regulation of our emotions. And this is a phenomenon that's very common in Huntington's disease. What we're having trouble with right now is how to best measure that. So we're really working hard on trying to examine different models, and I would love to talk about you with different ideas about that. We've considered doing telephone uh, talks because it takes so long during the interview to see if we can get a better handle on mood variations and regulation of your uh, behaviors and personalities. So we're open to more feedback. Finally, we've also uh, collaborated with Jean-Paul Von Sattel at Columbia University who will, uh, would love to be able to put in his brain bank library any brains from volunteers in Predict HD. We are setting it up as much as we can ahead of time, as some of the other scientists have discussed with you. We need to set that up ahead of time, because when you do uh, pass away, when any of us die, the families have to deal with all the sadness of losing a loved one. So it's best if we set that up ahead of time. So we're really trying to work with everyone to do that now because that data could be very important to better understanding the disease. So that's another um, thing we're, we're trying to expand. <laughs>